Something very much like beginner's mind is horror. When we first hear about it, especially in the Western countries, we might think that it means our abdomen. And then as we go further into our studies of body work and energy flow, we start to realize that hara is much broader than that, that it represents something that's more connected to the sum total of our life rather than a specific area of just our body. Now, of course, the central part of the energy flow goes into the area that we call our abdomen. But what that represents is these influences, these energetic influences that we have, the impacts, the interactions that then influence our energy system, influence how we're thinking, influence our emotional state. And we start to realize that Hara is not just like a thing, but it's a total part of our overall being. In the development of Shiatsu, there has been a process of specialization where the Hara became a vehicle for diagnosis of meridians. However, Hara can be a way of understanding the person's whole entire life. So when we touch the Hara, we can ask, how is this person's experience? What did they experience in the past? And what are they experiencing now? And what is the potential directions that they can take going forward? So Hara in and of itself is something that we can evaluate the Hara as opposed to using the Hara to evaluate something else. And so I highly recommend that. And I highly recommend that when we give treatments that we approach the Hara and the sensation and the well-being of it as an entity in and of itself. An important way that you learn about the Hara is by developing an understanding of how to center yourself. When you center yourself and you bring the forces of your system, the physical forces, the emotional and mental forces to a balance, to a grounding point, then you start to experience where is your hara? And you start to understand where that is in relationship to all the factors around you.